Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in my own garden and I'm going to show you how to seed a lawn. Now the best time to seed a lawn is mid-late spring and early autumn. You want the soil to have warmed up a bit and you want enough moisture for germination. So two factors, warmth and moisture. So wait until the risk of frost has passed. This is what you'll need to seed a lawn. A rake, this is an expandable rake. I love it, I use it a lot. It's great for doing what I'm going to do. It's great for other things as well, like raking up leaves, and it's light. Then I'm going to define the edge of my border, which will make the garden look smart. Grass seed, I'm using a, it's called tough grass, because I want a hard wearing grass. And also uh, this lawn is quite difficult to establish because of the conifer. So I want something hard wearing, so it's called tough grass. I'm not looking for the perfect lawn. I just want it to be nice and green because I really like a lawn. This is for digging up the weeds and then multi-purpose compost, peat free for establishing the grass seed. And that's all you're going to need. This is wild garlic. Is it a weed or is it a wild flower? It's a wild flower. It's very pretty, but I don't want it in my lawn because it's very invasive and I think it sells seeds. And um, so I want to remove it. And you can decide which wild flowers or weeds you want to keep. There it is, and I'm gonna remove that. Um, the next one I'm gonna remove is this broad leaf weed. It's a perennial and it will take up space in the grass. So I'm gonna remove that. I've got a couple of brambles. You don't want them in your lawn. So take them out. Quite easy to remove. We've had lots of rain, so it's a good time to weed. Also, remove any sycamore seedlings. They're quite easy to remove at this time of year, but as they get more established, they're quite hard to remove. So just take a bit of time. I get loads of sycamore seedlings in here, and I'll do them gradually. They take a bit of time, but remove, remove as many as you can. This is forget-me-not, a wildflower. I absolutely love forget-me-not. So I'm going to allow it to self-seed into my lawn. It's a great self-seeder. It's really good ground cover. And I don't mind if it just goes anywhere in my lawn. This is Creeping Buttercup. It actually has a very pretty yellow flower, but it is invasive. And I don't want it just here. I want grass seed. So we'll see if it establishes, because near the conifer, I don't really manage to establish it, but I'm gonna take this out because it's only gonna spread. So it's a perennial weed, so you need to dig it out by the roots and um, discard it. This is a thistly plant, which I'm gonna remove because I don't want it in my garden. And there's a nice little patch of forget-me-nots, which will establish and sell seed. This is a weed, it has a pink flower, but I'm gonna leave it because it's pretty and hopefully it'll self seed and spread underneath the conifer where nothing else will grow. So those are all the types of weeds in my garden and I'm going to go around and remove them all. That's pretty much all the weeding done. I don't mind if there's the odd weed in here because it's gonna be a rusty tufty lawn. And now we're going to move on to stage two. Stage two is to rake the lawn. The reason you rake the lawn is to tickle the soil because lawns get very compacted because they get a lot of walking on. So give it a good rake and just uh, loosen up the soil a bit and just go for it, vigorous raking. And also any dead grass that comes out is a plus and just do the whole lawn, it's quite a nice job. Um, you mow the lawn because you want light to get to the grass seed and um, you want to mow it quite close, but you don't want to sculp it, but it needs to be fairly short. And I'm gonna skirt around the forget-me-nots because I want to keep them. I'm just going to adjust the height of the mower, take it down by one notch, and hopefully that'll be the right height. 
this is an electric mower so you need to have the cable over your shoulder so it's safe because you don't want to run over the cable obviously so i'm just going to start mowing Now that's about the right height. It's not sculpt, but it's short, so that the grass seed won't compete with the existing grass. Now I'm gonna define the edge of the border. This will give the lawn a shape, as well as the border, and will make the garden look smart overall. So the best thing is to run a string, as I've done, with bamboo so that you have a straight edge. This is a half moon, it's a good quality one, and I really recommend that you buy one with a good blade, a good sharp blade, and it's got a really sturdy handle. It's actually Bergen and Ball, or Bergen Ball, and they're really good quality tools, and that will just last me forever. And I'm going to show you how to edge. There's a little um, lip here, which is where you put your feet. So go behind the string. Just work your way along. And it will give a nice crisp edge. The next stage is to sprinkle multi-purpose compost onto the lawn. This is to add fertility to help germination and to give the grass seed something to germinate into. So a bit of a base. You want to use a fairly fine compost, not a coarse one. This is a really nice brand. It's called Rocket Grow and it's peat free and it's made in Somerset. Now I'm going to show you how to apply the compost. You want to sprinkle it on, not too thick. And actually the best way is just to throw it. It's really good fun. And then it settles into the grass. So you just broadcast it. And I'm going to do the whole lawn. Do what I can from sitting down. And I'll probably go the other end of the lawn and do that way as well, so there's a thin layer. Now I've applied the compost, and the next stage is to rake it. You don't want it sitting on the grass, you want it to be at the base of the um, grass blades. So I'm just going to get rid of that because it's a bit of rubbish. So just gently rake it in, it's quite a nice job. The hard work is mainly done there. So now I've applied the compost. It's settled into the lawn, as you can see. I'm going to get rid of the rubbish and then I'm going, going to go on to the next stage, which is applying the grass seed. There is um, a little shaker thing here, but I don't use it. I just open the box and just apply it by hand. I actually apply it more thickly than they say on the box because I'm going to need some scissors for this. No, wait a minute, I'm doing it. It's happening. Just open it up, the whole thing. I apply it more thickly because um, the pigeons can eat some of the grass seed, as can other birds. So I feed the birds, well, not intentionally, but. So take a handful of grass seed, good handful, and then I'm going to sprinkle it on the lawn like sprinkling salt on your dinner. When you sprinkle the grass seed, spread it quite, sprinkle it quite thickly 
but you don't want to sprinkle it too thickly otherwise there'll be too much competition for light and moisture but particularly light so I'm just going to show you how to do it this is a really nice job it's the really nice bit after all the hard work of raking and weeding this is the really nice bit don't worry if you do the odd thick patch because it's going to be raked again so you can even it out but this is a really nice job I love doing this job I should have been a farmer The small box of grass seed I had wasn't quite enough. So I've got, luckily I've got another box. I have plenty of grass seed. And actually my advice is buy a big box of grass seed. Don't buy a small box, even if you've got a, a, a small lawn, because you may need to do another seeding because you don't get 100% germination. So have some extra grass seed. I'm just gonna finish the lawn. Now I've applied the grass seed and it's on to the next stage. Now I'm going to rake the grass seed gently into the compost. This is to settle it in and also to even it out. So I just put it on a slightly wider setting. Like so, I'm not demonstrating that very well. And just, it's just a really gentle, just so it's not sitting on top of the grass. It's more like at the base of the grass blades and then you can even out the thick bits don't worry if it's kind of disappearing it's it will grow just a really gentle rake that's the grass seed raked in and it's on to the next stage there are a lot of stages for seeding a lawn, but it's really worth doing well because you'll have a lovely lawn. Now I'm gonna apply a thin layer of compost over the grass seed. And this time you don't rake it in. This is to protect it from the pigeons and other birds, but pigeons have eagle eyes and they'll see the seed. So you just sprinkle it and you wanna get out the lumps. So first of all, I just sort of rub it like crumble in my hands just to get out any lumps. You don't want the lumps. And then just apply it thinly so that the seed is covered. Not a thick layer. This is a nice job. Any lumps, just pick them up and just crumble it. Like you're making crumble. But do the edge. The edges are really important in a garden because they give the lawn a shape, a definition and make the lawn look smart. So I do like an edge, particularly as I have quite abundant planting and I like the contrast between a sharp edge of a lawn and abundant planting. So you do this to the whole lawn and then after that, you water it unless it's gonna rain which it is gonna rain this afternoon, I think it's forecast. So just sprinkle. Okay, that's done. I've applied the compost. So the next thing is to water. It's very important that grass seed has moisture, otherwise it won't germinate. It is forecast to rain this afternoon, so I'm actually gonna leave it 
and if it hasn't rained by tomorrow I will water. Now I don't have an outdoor tap as many people don't and I have to rig it up to my bathroom tap which is quite a palaver and run the hose through my house. So I am actually going to water it with a watering can tomorrow if it hasn't rained because it's a small lawn. So you want you want a watering can with a rose and you want to give it a good soak. If you have a hose, you want to use a nozzle on the end of the hose, as which I have got in my shed. You have this attachment and then you twist it so it's on the spray setting. You don't want to have it on jet because it will dislodge the seeds. So have it on a spray setting. Imagine it was raining and you want to water if it doesn't rain about every two or three days. Don't mow your lawn or walk on it for a month to allow the new grass to establish. Thank you for joining me. Please like me, please subscribe. I'll be posting on Wednesday mornings and Sunday mornings. So please keep up to date with my latest content. Thank you very much.